every single command you give your FTC robot, from moving a motor to reading a sensor, boils down to one thing, manipulating variables. This is the absolute foundation of robot programming. And if you don't get this right from the start, you'll be building your entire robot's code on shaky ground. In this video, I'm going to walk you through using variables in Java programming for FTC, assuming that you have no programming experience. We're going to cover what variables are, the most common data types you'll actually use in the competition, and then we'll write a program together step by step that displays information right to your driver station screen. Oh, and by the way, I'm Coach Pratt. For over a decade, I've been a robotics educator, and I've coached FTC teams to national championships and multiple Inspire Award wins. Everything we cover today is designed to give you practical skills that you need to build a competitive robot step by step. I promise you that if you're feeling intimidating by programming and scripting, you won't be by the end of this video. So let's take a look at some different types of variables and data types that you can use inside Java. The thing to know about a variable is that a variable is a named location where we can store information. Right? You can think of it like a bucket where you put things in. You've already probably used variables in math where you say something like 8 plus x is equal to 25. In this case, x is a variable. And x is likely an integer. Or x is an int, so we have an int x. So in order to create a variable in Java, we have we need to declare its type, which is an integer, and then we type the actual name that we want for our variable. So in more context of robots, you might have an int, which is short for integer. You might have something like int, which is robot height for how tall your robot is going to be. There are other types of things called a double. And this might be something like motor speed. And a double is kind of like a floating number or a decibel number. So a double might be something like zero point. So it can be a very, very large number. That is a decimal point. An integer has to be a rounded number. There's also Boolean's variables. And Boolean is simply a true or false value. So it might be something like claw closed might be a Boolean that you use. The claw is either open or the claw is in a closed state. So unlike other programming languages in Java, you have to describe what type of data is going to be stored in this variable. So claw closed has to be a Boolean, motor speed has to be a double or that decibel number, and robot height has to be an integer. When you first create a variable, you don't actually give it a value. Uh, in order to give it a value, you give it some sort of equal sign. So I might uh, say that robot height is equal to 10. I might say that motor speed is equal to 0 0.5. Oops, not comma, 0 0.5. Uh, Europeans keep track. It has to be a point or a decimal, not a comma. And then you might have something like claw close is equal to true at the end. So you, we use that single equal sign to assign something or actually give it a value. You've already seen this in things like math. We'll go back to that 8 plus x equals 25. We are assigning that this equation is equal to 25. They are the same thing. So robot height is the same thing as 10. Motor speed is the same thing as 0 0.5. Claw closed is the same thing as true. There are more data types that exist in Java, and we'll get more of those later. But for the most part, you're going to use integers, doubles, and booleans as your most common variable and data types inside of FTC programming. So let's go ahead and actually write a program here that uses some variable types. So I'm going to come inside my team code folder inside that org team code. I'm going to right click, make a new Java class. And I'm going to call this one variable practice. We'll make it a class. And if you remember from last time, you always have to have extends op mode, at least for these tutorials, we're going to say extends op mode with capital P's. You can either double click on this op mode or press tab on your keyboard to autocomplete. And it automatically puts in our import statement that we need to be able to actually run op mode. And you remember last time, those red squiggly lines typically mean there's an error. And right now there is an error in our code because all of our programs need to have, or all of our op mode needs to have an init method and a loop method. So we'll go ahead and add these in in a minute. Above our op mode, we're going to go ahead and write the word at, 
We're going to write teleop because you remember if you don't have at teleop or at autonomous, it will not show up on your driver station. So now I'm going to go inside, inside these curly brackets and we're going to say public void init. And inside of our initialization method, we are going to declare three new variables. So we're going to say int team number with a semicolon. And when you create a variable, you can also assign a value to it. So I'm going to say that team number is equal to 23014, semicolon at the end. I'm going to make a double called motor speed. And we're going to assign this to the value 0.75, so 5 with a semicolon. We're also going to make a Boolean. We're going to say Boolean claw closed is going to be equal to true, semicolon. So now inside of our initialization statement, we have now created three new variables. One of an integer type, a whole number. One of a double or a long floating point number. And one of a Boolean. Boolean's going to be true or false. We also, if you remember, we still have that red error because all op mode classes need two methods. You need init and we need our loop. So I'm going to set public void loop. I'll use my arrow keys to select that. Press tab. Didn't take it out. And inside this, all we're simply going to do is leave nothing. Instead, up in our void init, we're now going to actually print what these variables are showing. So I'm going to say telemetry. I'll use the tab, dot notation. So put in that period so we can start doing some autocomplete, add data, and go ahead and tap the tab in again. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and put the string with the quotation mark so we can start creating a new variable kind of. Again, this one's a string or a word. I'm going to say team number. And I'm going to put a comma. Now, this time, I am not going to put in a quotation marks. If I put in quotation marks, I'm going to get the literal word team number. Instead, I want to write team number just as lowercase. Because what this does is this is going to print the value of 2314. So on our screen, it should say team number 2314 because it's accessing that stored location that has that value that we stored, which was 23,014. We're going to do the same thing for the other two variable types. I'm going to say telemetry dot add data. Again, I'm using that autocomplete. We're going to put in a literal string at the front here to say motor speed, comma, after the quotation mark. And then I'm going to actually write in the point motor speed. Again, I love using autocomplete because it helps you not make spelling mistakes. And spelling mistakes will destroy your code. <laughs> You'll get very frustrated from misspelling something. So autocomplete is actually a good habit to get into. Last one we're going to do is, of course, as you can probably guess already, we're going to telemetry add data. We're going to add claw state. Or we're going to say claw closed in this case, comma. And then we're going to put in the variable claw closed. And then we'll close it all off with a semicolon at the end of all of our lines. So now I'm going to go ahead and run this on our team code. Make sure that our Control Hub is connected via USB-C to USB-A. And we're going to go ahead and click this little green refresh and make sure we have the Rev Robotics Control Hub selected. We'll go ahead and run this. Oops. And I actually need to delete my variable examples because it's not a proper Java class. So we'll go ahead and delete that. Go ahead and run it because it doesn't like any of the errors that I have. It tries to compile all of the code that we have inside. And we see we have our hello world from last time. We have our variable practice from this time. It's going to say that it might throw this error. Don't worry about that. We'll just go ahead and get rid of that. And we should come over to our driver station. And you'll notice that our driver station is now disconnected. You can see in the top left, there is the flashing blue light on the control hub. That's how we know that it's currently compiling the code on side of the robot controller itself. This can take anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds, depending on how much big your code base is. And now you can see that we've got our station tele up. We'll select variable practice. We're on our initial license statement. And we get the value of our variables. Team number is an int. Motor claw is a double. And claw closed is a boolean. We assign three different values to those specific variables. And rather than showing up as the 
name, team number, it said 23014. I just want to show you what would happen is this is really common when you start working with variables is I'm going to make these last three strings instead. But I'm going to leave, actually, I'm not going to. Yeah. So I'm going to make these last three now strings. Let's go ahead and compile this. And let's take a look at the difference that shows up. Now in our code, we would expect that it should say team number, team number, motor speed, motor speed, clock closed, clock closed. And now that we're fully compiled, we can go ahead and select our tally up mode, variable practice. And when we initialize, we now have the literal string team number, motor speed, and clock closed, as opposed to the variable itself. So let's go ahead and delete those literal strings again so that we end up printing the variables. Now, a string is not actually a variable in Java. In other programming languages, it is a variable. But in Java, a string is actually a class. And because in Java, with our variables, our variables follow a, a, a camel case method, which means that everything always starts lowercase, and then it goes to a capital letter in our second word. Classes always start with a capital. So for instance, variable practice called Pascal case. So instead, we're actually going to write a string with a capital, and our string might be something like name, and our name is going to be equal to Coach Pratt. You can put in your name at this point. And then we're going to go ahead and add this data one more time. So I'm going to say telemetry.addData. You should know this right now. It might be something like name, comma, and then we can put in our string, which in our case was name. Go ahead and end that note. And let's go ahead and run this code. So let's go back to our driver hub. And at this point, we are now compiled. I've sped this up so we don't have to sit here for 20 seconds. Let's go ahead and select teleop, variable practice. And now we run our initializing method. We can see that our name, Coach Pratt, is showing up below the rest of all of our other variables. Inside Java, variables for FTC, at least, we're typically going to use integers, booleans, and doubles. Uh, you probably won't use strings very frequently. You may, but you'll probably more use strings in your telemetry section as opposed to actually using them inside of your program. Uh, we'll talk about them just so that we know that they exist, but we won't actually use them regularly. So now it's time for a little bit more practice. And again, for these practice, I'm going to write these inside of a block comment. So I'm going to write a slash and then an asterisk and should automatically create an asterisk slash to close off our block comment. So for your first exercise or your first practice, one thing I want you to know is that uh, you don't want to skip over these. Uh, you don't simply want to watch these videos and, just, and not actually be physically writing the code. The best thing to be doing is to physically write the code along with me because you'll get these brain patterns uh, imprinted inside of you, as opposed to just passively consuming this. So don't just ignore these exercises. Make sure you're actually doing them because this is where that real learning actually sticks. The first one, it wants you to change the string name variable or the string variable name to your team name. So make your robot team's name display. So the solution for that one, pretty simple. Come up to line 13. I have a string name. I might call it something like team name. And I'm going to call my team name the Flying Dutchman. And then you'll notice that it threw an error on the telemetry add data because name doesn't exist, but team name does. So now I want you to create a new variable. We're going to create a create an int variable, an integer variable called motor angle and store an angle between 0 to 180 inside this variable. Then display this in your init method. Solution that one's pretty easy. I can make a new line where I'm creating all my other variables. I'm going to say, say int motor angle is equal to 90 with a semicolon. And then I'm going to say telemetry dot add data. We're going to say motor angle. And at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and put in the motor angle variable with a string. 
So you can go and build this. Make sure you don't just test it. Make sure you build it and run and make sure that it actually does show up on your driver station. So at that point, that's everything you need to know about, well, not everything, but that a really quick introduction about using variables inside a job. We're going to use these a lot uh, throughout FTC program because it makes your code a lot easier to read. So I hope you found that helpful. If you ran into a problem with this, let me know in the comments down below and I'll see if I can help you out with some of your code. Otherwise, best of luck on programming your robot and I hope I see you again in the future.